Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. So, how many people out here have heard of conceptual art? Very good, very good. And uh, out of those, how many people feel that they could define conceptual art? Very good, one, okay. Um, that's honest, I, I like that, because conceptual art is actually, uh, let me just set this down. Uh, conceptual art is actually, uh, sounds like you might know how to define it, but there's different definitions. I'll, I'll give you mine. Uh, with conceptual art, you don't actually have to have an art piece. You don't have to have a painting, a sculpture, a piece of music. Uh, the concept alone will suffice. Although usually there, there is a physical piece to go with the concept. So I want to use as an example here, uh, Yoko Ono. <laughs> this is her book, Grapefruit, which came out uh, about 40 years ago. Was reprinted, uh, I think in 2000. She was part of a group of conceptual artists back in the day. Painting for the skies. Drill a hole in the sky. Cut out a paper the same size as the hole. Burn the paper. The sky should be pure blue. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a piece of conceptual art that I wrote. First of all, you have uh, two radios. One over here, one over here. Both tuned to different talk stations. In the back, you have a, a third uh, thing playing, and this thing is playing uh, Chinese in 30 hours. And it's all in Chinese. In the meanwhile, the performer is writing on the blackboard the story of my day. I got up, I had some tea, I walked out and looked at the window, looked out the window, etc. That's the piece. It's very interesting because the two radios tend to sort of be sort of synchronistic with one another and that the Chinese really just kind of gets you out, I mean out of your head. I mean it's, it's, it works. I really like it. Maybe I'll do it for you sometime but I don't have three, three radios right now. Uh, a conceptual art piece I heard about recently uh, was done over in Europe, and it was done with police cars. Uh, apparently what they did was they turned the police cars over, and then of course they were subsequently arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Their defense was that it was an art piece that they were doing. <laughs> Unfortunately, the authorities didn't really take it very kindly that the police were actually in the police cars when they were doing it. <laughs> I, I never heard any follow-up on this. I, 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 it was just something I heard on NPR one day, and I was like, oh, wow, that is so beautiful. <laughs> so you can even take this concept farther. Let's look at our country's uh, foreign policy right now as a piece of conceptual art. And, and you know, I, I'm not going to go into it, but there are alternative ways that you could conceive this piece of conceptual art. You know, we all know that nonviolence is very powerful, in fact. The power of example, the power of modeling the behavior that you would like to see. I mean, we could even look at it as an attempt at humor, the way that they're going it all so upside down. So, okay, now I'm going to need some notes because I'm really getting out here. Okay, so the Thrive movie was something that really inspired this piece. Has anyone seen the Thrive movie that, that's here? It kind of went around for a while. Well, um, I watched the movie first, and uh, I was sort of halfway through it, because I watch movies half an hour at a time. I can't take too much information at once. And uh, in the middle of it, I emailed somebody, and, and, and they emailed me back, and they said, oh, well, the people that made that were, were saying that global warming was actually not human-caused. And uh, so, so I went, uh, before finishing the movie, I went and looked at the critiques of the movie on, on the, the uh, different websites. In fact, he included one website. 
So this actually was, was a dialogue because the Thrive movie was about 